Hello everyone and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in and watching this video. We are going to start a new topic today called work, power, and energy. And in this first set of notes called the work, I'm going to divide the video into two parts. So you are watching part one right now. So before we start getting into the detail, I just kind of want to give us an overview of our unit. And really our unit the big picture view is conservation of energy. And you probably have heard that phrase before. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. So this is supposed to be like an image representing our entire universe. So in our universe, when it was born, we were given an amount of energy. And energy is measured in a unit called joules named after James Prescott Jewel. And so we were given our jewels at the Big Bang. And I'm just going to make up a number. Let's pretend we were giving 1,000 jewels. That is very unrealistic. And it is also impossible to know how many jewels we were given. But the point is, however many jewels we were given, we're never going to get any more energy jewels. And we will never have any less energy joules. Conservation of energy says energy cannot be created or destroyed. But I do want to point out that we do have one little minor problem because I guess in the creation of the universe, energy must have been created once. But now that we have it, it cannot be created or destroyed. So we have our 1,000 joules. And in our universe, we have lots of different types of energy. For example, we have potential energy kin or kinetic energy, light energy, sound energy, heat energy, nuclear energy, uh, electrical energy, etc. And we can keep converting those energies into different types. We can transform the energy into a different type, but we'll never gain or lose any joules. But let's pretend, for example, that we have water going over a waterfall. That would be kinetic energy. And we plan to build a power plant to transform that energy into electrical energy so that we can do things like light up our house and plug things in, etc. So let's pretend that I took 100 kinetic energy joules, again, very unrealistic, and I wanted to turn them into electrical energy joules. And maybe I only got 90 electrical energy joules. Then I might say to myself, wait a minute, I took 100 of them. How come I didn't get 100 electrical energy joules? Well, maybe some work had to be done in order to transform or to complete this energy transformation. And so work is a physics concept that comes into play. It's kind of like energy, meaning that it can eat up some of my energy joules. So work is also going to be measured in joules, but it comes into play when I'm looking at energy conversions. So we have to kind of treat the, the topic of work the same as energy, because if I'm trying to look at conservation of energy, I have to take the work that was done into account. I could also, uh, I could also take, um, oh gosh, what's an example? I could take a candle and maybe I plan to light the candle and turn that into heat energy. And while I was lighting the candle and turning that into heat energy, somebody else lit a Bunsen burner and added to my heat energy. I'll say Bunsen burner here. And so really another person could have come into the story and they could have added work into the story and I could have ended up with extra jewels than I expected. And maybe in my example over here, the work that was done by the power plant took away some of my jewels. So sometimes work can be negative, sometimes it can be negative or positive, but 
it affects the total amount of joules that I have. So if I'm looking at conservation of energy, I also have to take work into account. So I'll just kind of plant that seed right now to give us a little bit of reason for why we have to start with the concept of work as we work our way up to the real topic of conservation of energy. Okay, with that little intro, we're going to come down to number two, where it says the physics definition of work. So, for example, you might say that you work at Target, you work at Starbucks, you work at McDonald's. That kind of work does not count. So how do you know if it's the kind of work that counts? You have to use the physics definition of work. And the physics definition is right here. So work is the product of the force in the direction of the displacement. So as an equation, I'm gonna say work is the product, that means multiply, the force that's in the direction of the displacement. So the whatever the displacement is, whatever the movement of the object is, you have to find the force that's in that same direction. I'll come back and better define that in a minute. So if I look at the units of work, force is measured in newtons and distance or displacement, which in many of my examples are going to be interchangeable today. So we, we often use distance and displacement interchangeably. Um, because force is in newtons and distance is in meters, the real unit of work is a newton meter, is a newton meter. But let's look at a Newton for a minute. I'm going to go off to the side. And we learned about Newtons back here when we did F equals MA. And mass was measured in kilograms. Acceleration was in meters per second squared. So technically, the unit of a force is a kilogram meter per second squared. So I'm going to write that down. But oftentimes, we honor a scientist and Newton did a lot with the topic of dynamics. So we took the unit of kilogram meter per second squared and we called them Newtons. We're gonna do the same thing here for the topic of work and energy. So we have the unit of work as a Newton meter and I should break down what a Newton is equal to. A Newton coming from up here now, whoops, up here, a Newton is equal to a kilogram meter per second squared, but I still got this meter here. And so if I combine all of that, I would get a kilogram meter squared per second squared. And so that's the real un unit of work. But we could take that whole unit and instead call it a joule. Again, after James Prescott Joule. And we'll use a capital J to be the unit of work. All right, so as an equation, one of the ways that you can calculate work is the force times the displacement, making sure that the force is in the same direction as the displacement. But there's other ways you can ca uh, calculate work that we'll look into later in the unit. Sometimes I like to say work is what gets done. At the end of the story, it's what gets done, not how it gets done. For example, maybe your goal is to do work and you want to get a bowling ball that's on the ground to the top of a cliff. So you could just like lift it straight up. Or you could, you know, take the trails and walk yourself up to the cliff. And nobody cares how you got there. Work is the bowling ball was on the ground and now it's on the top of the cliff. So sometimes I like to use the casual uh, definition of what gets done. All right. In the next set here, I want to talk about some examples. And we have to look at these examples and decide if these examples meet this physics definition of work. If so, yes, physics work is done. Or is the answer 
No, they don't meet the definition and therefore work is zero and does not come into play when I'm looking at my conservation of energy joules. And if work is done, then I want to pay attention to who is doing the work. So who is losing the joules if you do the work? Or who are you giving your joules to if the work is being done on that object? All right, my first example is going to be pulling a mass. So let's say I came into school one morning and there was this big crate sitting in my classroom. And someone said to me, can you pull that crate across the room? And I might look at it and I'd say, no, there's just no way I can move that crate. I'm tired. I haven't even had breakfast yet. I don't feel like I have any energy. But maybe I wait for a little bit and I have a bowl of cereal. And I eat a bowl of cereal and let's say that I ate 100 joules of cereal. Now you might say, well, cereal is measured in calories. But if I went into my energy conversion menu, I could convert calories into joules and know how many joules that I just ate. But I just ate some joules and now I'm feeling good. Now I say, oh yeah, I can move that box across the room. All right. So I pull that box across the room and let's say that I pull it with a force of something and the box started here and then the box ends up over here. So there is a force in the story. There is a distance in the story. And I can calculate the work done. So is work done? Yes. There's an F and a D in the, in the story. And they are in the same direction. All right. Who does the work? I did the work. I did the work. And if I did the work, that means that I lost joules. So I ate that bowl of cereal, which was 100 joules, and maybe it cost me 80 joules to move that box across the room. So if that's the case, I am down 80 joules. And if I'm down 80 joules, who did I give the joules to? Well, let's make an assumption that I gave the joules to the box. So the box is up 80 joules. And what kind of evidence would I have in real life that I was down joules and the box gained joules? So one type of evidence might be at the end, I was feeling really good after I ate the bowl of cereal, but at the end of the story, after I pulled that crate across the room, I'm like just feeling whipped. I am feeling like tired. I feel like I just lost some energy. I need to recharge. Maybe I need another bowl of cereal. What about the box? This box was at rest, but as I was pulling it, the box was picking up speed. So the box was moving. So if something starts at rest and then it changes speed, that's evidence that the box has gained some joules. Also, if the box was like rubbing on the tile as I pulled it, and I bet if we could take a little thermometer and measure the temperature of those molecules or atoms between the box and the floor, their temperature would have gone up. So I might, the box might have also taken some of its joules and increased the temperature of the molecules between that and the floor. So those are some pieces of evidence that we look at. All right, another example is going to be dropping a mass. So let's go back to the cliff. Okay, so we'll get that bowling ball that's up there. And it's going to fall down. All right, so is work done? How do you tell? Is there an F in the story? Is there a force acting when something's falling? Yeah, it's gravity. So let's call that FG, FG. And FG actually would be equal to FW. It's going to equal the weight of the bowling ball. So there is an F in the story. Is there a D in the story? Does the bowling ball change its, um, or does it move a certain distance? Yeah, it starts at the top of the cliff, ends up at the bottom of the cliff. There is an F and the D. They're in the same direction. So yes, work is done. Who did the work? 
this time, not me. You might say gravity did the work, or you might say that the earth did the work. So the earth is down some jewels. Let's pretend the earth is down 10 jewels. What evidence might I have that the earth is down 10 jewels? I'm not sure I'm going to be able to measure that one. What evidence would I have that the bowling ball gained jewels? Well, just like before, the bowling ball was at rest and it picked up speed. So that's some evidence that he might have picked up some jewels there. All right, the next one, holding a mass over your head. So in this example, I want you to picture like, like somebody who's like, I'll say, kind of working out and they got their hands over their head and somebody walks up to them and they put this big barbell in their hands so like this, like that holding the mass over their head. Now, if I was doing that, I would feel like, oh my God, this thing is heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. Is there an F in this story? Yeah, there's an F in this story. That would be the weight of the barbell. So that'd be like the FW going down and I would feel that. All right. Is there a D in the story? Is the barbell starting at one point and ending up at another point? No, I'm just holding it. So there's no D in the story, or you might say that D is zero, and F times zero is going to be zero. So no work is done. This is not going to gain me any jewels or lose any jewels. Now, if I started lifting, raising, or lowering it and lifting it, then there's a D. So if I go up and down, then there's work, but not just holding it over my head. All right, so... The next example is walking across the room. So maybe I'm like this and I got my hand out and somebody puts a big box in my hand. All right. And I'm walking across the room. So the box is starting here and then the box is ending up over here. So there is a D here. All right, is there an F in the story? Yeah, I feel it right there. It's that heavy box, the FW of the box. All right, but this is an example that the F and the D are not in the same direction. Like the D is in the X direction and the weight of the box, the F is in the Y direction. So you have to have the F and the D in the same direction. They don't have to point the same way. They just both have to be like in the X direction or both in the Y direction. You can't have one in the X and one in the Y. So because of that, carrying something does not result in a change in joules. All right, my last example is spinning the stopper over your head. So we have this person here and we did this lab. So we'll put their hand on their hip and their other hands up here and they're spinning the stopper like this. So we'll put the stopper right here. All right, so is there an F in the story? Yeah, there is. Anytime you have a, something going in a circle, there's an F and it points to the center of the circle. Um, we'll just call it a centripetal force. And then What's the, the D of the stopper? What is the displacement of the stopper? Well, you could say that at any given moment, the direction of the stopper, let me kind of draw this with a top view. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a real circle, not my little ellipse looking thing here. So if the stopper's here, my F is going towards the center. And at this moment, the stopper is, I'll say, moving in that direction. But the next moment, the stopper is over here, and the F is towards the center. Now the stopper is going in this direction. The Basically, the D is always pointing in the direction of the tangent velocity. So the stopper is going this way, and then he's 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 going this way. 
The point is, he never is has a D arrow pointing towards the center of the circle. So just like this example, the F in the D, if these are all the Ds and this is the F, the F and the D never point in the same direction. So therefore, work is not done when something is going in a circle. A little technicality that we just need to be aware of. All right, I want to do a quick example here. And the point of the example is to show you that sometimes you have to read a question very carefully to understand what to calculate and that you need to try to create some meaning to your calculations. All right, so it says a student pulls a box across the floor with a force of 10 newtons. The frictional force acting on the block is four newtons and the box is going to move five meters. So I'll just draw a little quick picture of that. So this is my box. It's going across the floor. I'll turn my box into a dot. I'm going to pull. Um, so if I'm pulling, I'll call it an FA. I'm going to pull with 10 newtons. It says that friction is four. So we'll make friction go this way. Friction's four. And then I'm going to say to myself that the box like started here and then I pulled it a distance of five meters. So there would be my picture. All right, the first question says, how much work does the student do? All right, so they're asking me about the student. So I'm going to write down F or W equals FD. And I'm going to put in how much work the student does. Well, the student is pulling with this force of 10. So 10 and the student pulls at five meters. So the student did 50 joules of work. So when that happens, I want you to picture that that person who may have just had the Cheerios to get enough energy to do this is now down 50 joules, okay? Because he or she pulled that box across the room. Where did this person, or where did these 50 joules go? I'm making the assumption that they were given to the box. They were like, I moved the box. So let's mentally put those 50 joules right there. All right, next. Next question says, how much work does the frictional force do? So uh, I guess we're going to kind of treat friction like as a person. Okay, how much work does friction do? So friction can do work. Friction can eat up some of my jewels. So I'm going to put friction here. How much work did friction do? Well, friction was four in this direction. And the box ended up going five in this direction. But I do want to point out that those are considered the same direction. The five is happening in the x direction. The friction is happening in the x direction, technically the negative x direction, um, but it's still considered the x direction. So it's still considered the same direction. So 20 joules. Friction did 20 joules. So if friction did 20 joules, friction like is, is something that, that's, that's bad, that's negative. Well, not always bad, but it, it takes away from the the total amount. And so I gave the box 50 joules, but friction just ate 20 of them. So I'm going to lose 20 to friction. And one way you could look at it that I lost 20 joules due to friction is the D was happening in the positive direction and the friction was happening in a negative direction. That would have got that negative there if I needed that mathematically. But it made sense to me to just know that friction was working against me. So I might mentally be thinking right now, well, if I did 20, 50 joules of work on the box and friction just ate 20 of them, I can see that the box is going to now only have 30 left. So you might be able to reason it out this way. Or sometimes we could just word the question like, I don't really care about this and I don't care about this. Just put it all together for me and tell me what 
is the net work done in this story. So if I did it that way, I might write my equation like this. What is the net work done? That's like overall. Then I'm going to plug in the net force. That's like overall taking everything into account. So if I did this, if I said to you, looking at this picture, what is F net? You might have said, well, it's 10 this way and 4 this way. So the net force is 6. The net force is 6. And how far does the box move? It moves 5 meters. The net work done on the box is 30 joules. That takes everything into account. The box is going to have 30 extra joules at the end of the story as a result of me pulling on it and friction acting on it. So sometimes you just have to read very carefully how much work does the student do, how much work does friction do, or what is the network to know exactly what they're wanting you to solve for. Okay, I'm going to end video one right here, and please check into video two for number five, and then number five will help you be able to do your homework. Thank you.